James here from Build Tune Race and today I'm going to talk about my Camaro. Before I get started in this video, if you would and you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button below and if you want, turn on the little bell so you get the notifications when I post a new video. The usual setup in the Camaro was a Junkyard 5.3 with an LS6 cam, head bolts, MLS gaskets, just some really simple basic stuff. Uh, the car ended up going like 1053, 136. The new current combo is an LQ4 uh, based 408 with trick flow heads, uh, manly rotating assembly, and it still has the LS6 intake uh, as like a comp cams cam. It's not even like a super spec turbo cam or anything crazy. Uh, and it seems to work pretty good. So the car has a power glide transmission. It's just a stock case power glide. Uh, nothing fancy, just has good clutches and bands and stuff in it. And also when building the car, I ended up putting a Mosier 9 inch in the car. Uh, I had it back braced and all that. It's 35 spline spool, um, but nothing real crazy, but it's like you're good, like you call it Mosier and you order it and that's what you get. I ended up going with a stock width and then I went with seven and a half inch backspace rims. Um, high end side, I'd probably done that a little bit different so I could fit a little bit different wheel if I ended up going to a like mini tub to fit like a 29.5, 10.5. Um, but that's where I'm at. I, I tried not to go too crazy with the car because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I was just trying to do uh, like bolt on type stuff, but build a turbo car out of it. I'm going to go ahead and get into more about what the car is and what I've done with it. Salty is my 1998 Chevy Camaro that I built about three years ago. I started off with like trying to do the whole junkyard LS build and that's where I started out at. So uh, I bought the car as a roller. Somebody had pulled the original LS1 and the automatic out for like a hot rod. And the guy was selling just this car as a roller. So I ended up going up there. When I got there, I was looking at the car. Pretty clean car, not perfect, but it's it's a nice C28. Um, power windows, locks, everything like that. Uh, when I got up there to purchase the car, the owner said hey i got a 5.3 i was going to do a turbo build with and stuff are you interested in buying that and then i was like yeah sure and he's like i also got this ls6 intake i was like cool that'll work too um and then he goes in the house comes out and brings out a set of wheels and it's like your old weld um wheels and i was like yep that'll work and he's like i got this turbo too it's off of a diesel i was like no that ain't gonna quite work um but i'll go ahead and take everything else so i ended up coming home with a Camaro, a 5.3, uh, 120,000 mile 5.3 is what he told me out of like a Tahoe. It looked it, it doesn't have anything done to it. Uh, an LS6 intake, and then the wheels and tires that uh, like the skinnies and an eight inch wide rim on the back. So that kind of kicked off the whole thing. The car sat for just a little while, and then I ended up going ahead and building it. Uh, the car got built in like three, four months the first time. Uh, Pretty much threw the stock 5.3 in. Uh, the only things I did to it was an LS6 cam, uh, the LS6 intake, pack 12 18 valve springs, and uh, an oil pump. I left the stock lifters in it, uh, stock everything else. I mean, uh, oh, and MLS head gaskets. They weren't even the good like LS9s that everybody recommends. I just ordered like a Felpro kit, and they're like a five or six layer. Um, MLS that came in the kit. I ran those and uh, ARP head bolts to hold down the heads. Uh, heads were untouched, engine was untouched, um, didn't gap the rings or anything, just ran it. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Uh, nobody else I really knew had done the whole LS deal. Uh, when building the car, I originally was debating on putting a stock ECU in the car, uh, Langenfelter two-step, leash boost controller. That was kind of my direction. That's what I'd seen other people do. And I figured that's what was gonna work out best for me. Um, I got it all in there, started talking to a few people and started doing a lot of research on the internet. And then the Holly started becoming real popular right around that same time, uh, Holly EFI. So I literally had everything. I, I had the harness laying in the car and I pulled it all back out, sent it all back, paid the restocking fees and ordered a Holly. Uh, best decision probably ever that I've ever made. Uh, I love the Holly. It works out so well when you can go back, look at data. Um, just the adjustability, the two steps built in, it's just, it works so well. The car's turbo kit is super simple. I ended up using truck headers flipped over. I cut the stock flanges off, went ahead and put a V-band on, and then just used some stainless two and a half inch tubing to build the crossover and built my own merge. And that's it, it's a super simple turbo kit. And I was just really just trying to figure it out and learn it from there. Uh, so I started building it, got everything in, 
used some parts that we had laying around, uh, some old stuff my dad had, like an old converter, which was way too tight, um, an old turbo that didn't spool at all on a 5.3, especially with the converter that was way too tight, and all of that. So the first time I took the car to the track was street car takeover, Denver. Uh, I just wanted the car done. I wanted it there. I wanted to take it to the night meet. Uh, parts of the goal of the car was like to always get it on a 1320 video to get a post from 1320. So the very first meet I go to uh, 1320 snaps an engine bay shot of the car and posts it and I was just thrilled that was that's what it all was all about. Uh, the next day I go to Bandemir and go through tech. Car's good, needs a few little things but they let me run. Uh, go out there and the first pass it goes like 15-1 at 101 mile an hour and it was just so slow uh, the car just took forever to build boost like literally I don't even know if it built a pound of boost by like the 330 it was just so slow it was on wastegate uh, I didn't know what the heck I was trying to do I didn't have the trans brake hooked up uh, just trying to foot brake it and get it down through there and it was slow so for the rest of the day I just did everything I could to load the car as hard as I could on the line and ended up going like 14 7 at 104 or something like that it was just it was slow um come back decide that it probably needs a different turbo go ahead and put a different turbo on there figuring out i should probably put the boost controller on it i had everything i just didn't understand some of the wiring the inputs outputs so i ended up pulling up all the holly information on the website figuring out how to wire up the boost controller uh ended up putting a co2 bottle in the car so the car is on CO2. Uh, I highly recommend anybody that's building a car or has a car to go CO2. Uh, I have literally had that same bottle in the car, never removed for three years now, uh, and it still has plenty in it. I've left the bottle open for like weeks at a time, and it hasn't leaked or anything crazy. Uh, after the first season of having the car, first few months of having the car, I finally got everything dialed in. Was towards the end of the season, I was trying to go into the tens with it. I ended up going like 10.53 at 136. I did that at Bandemir, last day of the season, no cage in the car. First time I realized, wow, that's pretty fast. I should totally have a cage in the car. Uh, just a basic seat belt and 136 mile an hour with a whole bunch of concrete walls around you. It was a little sketchy. So uh, that was the end of the season. I made one more pass after that. I figured they were gonna kick me out, but they didn't quite, quite catch on to it. So I was able to make another pass. The day got hot, the track kind of went away. Uh, so the next pass was a little bit slower, but it was able to back up a 10 second pass. Uh, I was super happy, Junkyard 5.3, 1050s at 7,000 feet density altitude, and uh, it was just, it was cool. It was super fun, uh, such a simple combo, such a basic combo. Um, something that ended up making a huge difference to get to that point was I ended up getting a converter from PTC that was spec to my combo. And what a difference that makes. Instead of making a pound of boost at 300 feet out, you can leave on six or seven pounds of boost. Over the off season, I ended up putting a cage in the car. Uh, the cage is from Midwest Chassis. It's a um, jig fit uh, type cage. Uh, they notch them and tack them together in a jig that they have and then send them out. Uh, you can see where they kind of tacked it together and everything and the cage was great. The cage is super tight. It's such a good kit. Um, my dad has all the stuff. We could have made our own, but it was like $1,100. And uh, I think that was with the window net kit. Sent it to me. I installed it. Um, installing a cage in an F body is not fun. The dash is a pain to pull out. Uh, but I did not want an ugly cage that comes up in front of the dash, something that you bang your knees off of and everything else. I wanted it done correctly uh, in case I ever wanted to step up and go to like a 750 cage. Uh, so you got to remove the whole dash, notch the uh, crossbar and then kind of I tied it back in and everything as far as the fuel system goes on the car the fuel system uh, I ended up starting out with the junkyard 5.3 I had two 255 Walbrils in the in the hat I went to two Walbro 450s uh, that's currently what's in the car the car drives around on one Walbro 450 the rated like 700 on E80 at 5 um, and the car has two the second one and this is the way the car's always been set up is the one pump drives on uh, and then at about seven pounds of boost, the second pump will come on. Uh, stock hat, modified it, hung two in there, kind of wide them together. Uh, it comes out of the hard line, the stock hard line in the hat, 
and then I used AN adapters and then I ran an eight feed line all the way up to the engine uh, and then a six back as a return and it's worked out really good. The car has always been on ethanol. Uh, the car runs on E98 currently. I started with E85. Uh, I was getting like E92 out of the pump and then that pump went dry or whatever. They didn't get any more in. Went to another local pump and it was like E70. Uh, I saw really how messed up it can be if you have E90 to E70, like your car doesn't idle the same, it just doesn't run right, and if it's not idling right and stuff, you have to kind of retune everything. I've just decided I can buy E98 by the barrel, it's fairly cheap, and that's what I've been running ever since. Uh, ethanol is not the funnest, as if you do not take care of your injectors and you do not keep up on maintenance, things like this will happen. So this happened to me. Um, I ran the injectors for an entire season, let it sit over the winter, drove it a few times here and there, uh, went out the next year, went the fastest I've ever been, which is 566 at 126 in the eighth mile. That's all the car's geared for. Um, it coasted from like the thousand foot to an 891 at like 130 something. This happened because an injector started getting dirty. Um, the Bosch's, it didn't like lock one up or just stop firing that one. It just kept getting dirtier and dirtier, which caused it to not flow as much fuel, which caused that cylinder to go leaner. Uh, the way the Holly works and using a single O2 sensor, um, I could see it in like three or four previous passes. I didn't know what I was looking for at the time. I didn't quite understand it. So I could see that coming, uh, but I didn't know what was coming is that the O2 sensor was picking up, that's a little bit leaner, so we add a little bit of fuel. A little bit leaner, add a little fuel, a little bit leaner, added fuel. Well, it's pulling from that one cylinder and adding to the rest to make their fuel happy in the exhaust, but that cylinder was still going leaner and leaner by the minute, or by the pass, or whatever you want to say. Uh, and eventually, in the final of one of the races, I ended up melting a piston, and that was like the first main race of the year. Won it. It was cool. For a $500 win, I smoked uh, about $2,200 worth of parts or whatever. Um, it was time, though. Something else I learned during that time, uh, it was time for a rebuild. And why I know that is when we pulled the motor apart, uh, the car had probably 70 or 80 passes, but it had an original F-body pan on it with a... Uh, there's a company out there, I can't think of the name right now, but it's a, it's a baffle that you can bolt into a stock F body pan. And it helped quite a bit, it helped a lot, really. Um, but once the car started going like mid 130, 60 foot, even with an extra quarter oil in the pan, uh, you could see in the data on the Holly that it would make like 50 pounds of oil pressure, pull it, add it, pull it, add it, pull it, and it would go back and forth for quite a while, um, the whole pass, really. So whenever the engine came out, the, the main bearings were pretty beat up. The car is non-intercooled on E98. I do spray methanol in the intake to help cool the intake charge. Um, I also have the Holly set up that if it doesn't spray the methanol, which I've had that happen a few times, so air pockets or whatever in it, um, it will pull timing based on intake temp. So I kind of have it set up as a safety net and works pretty good. Uh, that's why I kind of wanted the car built from the original beginning was I wanted the car to drive down the street and literally be able to pull up to a stoplight or whatever and make a pass how it sits. Um, set tire pressure and make a pass. Um, power windows, locks, everything like that. Uh, it actually has still the heater in the car. Uh, doesn't have AC. And then I ended up, for the longest time, I had power steering still in it, but the last time the engine was out, um, I ended up going ahead and going to a manual rack um, and being our like tubular K member, I was trying to get some weight out of the car. The car also has lightweight bumper supports front and back, uh, along with like the, the parachute mount in the back. It has lightweight like frame underneath it. Um, trying to get weight out of the car and it has just not worked out for me very well. Uh, so the car with me and it weighs right at 3,600 pounds. That's uh, on a scale at like Bandamere. Uh, it might be a little heavy or I've heard that their scale might be just a little high. So even if it's 35, 90 or whatever with me in it. Uh, it's still pretty heavy. It is a t-top car It it that's the probably the biggest thing why I don't want to start trying to cut the car up or anything is because I just know I'm not gonna get the weight way down where I need it I'm better off if I want to go faster or build the like go to a 750 cert cage or car I'd probably just build something different. Uh, the car is awesome super fun the way that it is But I'm not gonna get it down in like the 2800 pound range uh, without going carbon everything and doors and crazy money just to get the car light um, So I'd be better off like pulling the combo out or maybe one day getting a six bolt set up and going into a different car So where the car is at is really fun. Like I said, it's it's been 890s um, If you take those numbers run them out if I had the gear the car at the fastest at like 19 pounds of boost 
should have went uh, 870, 160, which four bolt, 3,600 pounds street car, uh, I am super happy with that. I mean, the car is super fun like that. Uh, high high fives in the eighth. Um, the the tune up I've had in the car right now is like a 580 tune up, which is like an 899. Uh, if I had the gear to go out the back and it ran all last year, the car still has the exact same oil pressure. Everything's still been the exact same. Uh, and I feel that I could, as long as I keep up maintenance on like the injectors and stuff, the car will probably live for a long time like that, which is really cool. Uh, I need the car around for you guys to make content with and stuff, but I'm sure at some point I'll end up turning it up. That's a long rundown. Uh, if you guys stuck around for the whole thing, I appreciate it so much. And I hope you learned something. Uh, I know I've learned a ton about it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will be sure to get back to you guys with anything that I can. Uh, Cause I know a lot of you guys are trying to build similar combos. So I appreciate everybody for watching. If you would please like subscribe and share and we'll see you next time.